Today we're going to learn how to use state-of-the-art tooling to help out our code. Today we're going to learn how to use ESLint, Prettier, Package.json, Husky and GitHub workflows to make a production-ready application. So you can be sure that your production application is ready for a professional workflow. So first of all, this is an example with Next.js and TypeScript. Of course, TypeScript is the best tooling you can get, even better than ESLint or Prettier. So that's why I'm going to use TypeScript here. But at the end of this video, I will also show you how to implement everything we did in TypeScript on a JavaScript app. So first of all, let's talk about what is Prettier. Prettier is a tool that helps you format your code. So at the end of the day, that your code looks nice in the editor. Then ESLint is a tool that helps you find and fix problem in your JavaScript or in our example, TypeScript code. These problems can range from formatting to actual bugs in your code. So why do we do all of that? First of all, to catch bugs. So with these tools, we can find bugs more easily then have a consistent code, especially if you work in a larger team, and then help with some things that are easily forgotten, like accessibility and other things. So in a nutshell, make messy code into good code. All of those three tools, TypeScript, ESLint, and Prettier work very, very well with VS Code. But there are some things in your settings that you have to make sure they're set correctly. First of all is ESLint. If you go here and search it, you will find the different languages ESLint supports at the moment. So it's important that ESLint probe settings, all of those languages are set. Another setting you might want to do is prettier save. So this editor format on save. So every time you save a file, prettier actually runs and formats your code automatically. And then the last setting you want to check is format editor default formatter. You want to set that to prettier. If you have any issues, you can find my settings that I have in my VS code here in settings on JSON. There is a link in the description down below where you can find this settings file. So here in my package.json file, I've already set up the different rules and the different scripts here. So let's run them in our simple application and I'm going to explain what they actually do. And afterwards, I'm going to show you how I implemented them. So we can go here to npm run style colon all. And now the script runs and we can see the script has failed. First, we run the TypeScript compiler. Afterwards, we run npm run style lint, which lints our code with ESLint and then npm run style prettier, which checks our formats of prettier. So we can see here in the index.tsx, we have type string is not assignable to number. So let's fix that. Let's go to index. We can see here the error is in the card component. If you go to the card component, we can change that to string, save that. And now the error is gone. So let's run that script again. We can also run scripts here. So style all. And we can see we have a different error now. Prop spreading is forbidden and data is already declared in the upper scope. So one is in pages underscore app and the other one in index. So we can easily fix those. We can go here and rename that. I usually do F2, so we can rename it here. Let's say item. So that's fixed and that's an ESLint fix. How you can find that out is if you hover here, you can see ESLint. So you know where this rule is coming from and you can also see the exact rule. So if you click here, the documentation page shows up and you can read what exactly the rule is. The same thing before, if we backtrack a little um, and implement that error again, you can see that this error comes from TypeScript and not ESLint. So let's reverse that again. Now that should be good. Let's rename that F2 item that's fixed. And then let's go to app.js. We can see there is also a ESLint error. This time I want to allow this ESLint error to happen. So what we can do is go here to quick fix and disable for this line or disable for the entire file. So I disable it for the entire file and we can see the error is gone. So we can go to style all again. Let's see if it now has no errors. And we can see it fails again. Why does it fail? It says code styles issue found in the above files. So in pages underscore document, 
Did I forget to run prettier? So if you go here to document, we can see the style here is a little bit off. What we could do is save the page and it would reformat in the sense that prettier wants it. Or we can run this script, make pretty. And now we prettified the file. It's automatically saved. So if you run style all again, so the TypeScript compiler, ESLint and prettier, we can see that now the script was successfully run and there were no errors. So now our code is how we want it to be. Um, so how did we exactly set that up? So we have different files here, ESLint, prettier, RC. But before we start, there are many, many different ways of doing things with prettier and ESLint and how to configure exactly those tools. So sometimes you can see prettier, RC, .json, .js or without file extension. So just be aware there are different things. So if you research on the internet, don't be confused by the different ways people implement it. Then another important thing is that your rules that you set here, for example, or in prettier and your package.json or the respective um, packages are the right versions. Sometimes different types of versions have different types of rules. So make sure that you actually use the version you should suppose to use for the configuration you are setting up. And then the last little tip before we start, sometimes, especially related to the ESLint, to the parser here, if you do some changes here, it could be that you still see some errors. So sometimes you have to restart VS Code so that your squiggly line disappears. Okay, so let's start with the easy one, with prettier RC. Sometimes we have settings in VS Code already, like single quote or double quote, but as soon as you have a prettier RC file in your project, all of those rules get overwritten by what's in here and especially what's the standard of prettier. Prettier is an opinionated code formatter, so they have different rules that are already set up. If you go here to options, for example, you can see the different options there are and what the default values are. So there is no reason to install a rule that you already have as a default here. Only if you want to overwrite different rules, you can do that in the prettier RC file. And that was already it. The next thing is how to configure ESLint. This is already a little bit more complex here. I'm not going to go over every rule, but the parser, for example, if you use TypeScript, you have to use this parser. There are different parser options. You can just copy and paste from this example. The link to the repo is in the description down below. Important is to reference here a tsconfig file. So ESLint works with tsconfig, especially if you have different paths. Another important thing is that you have all your files referenced here in the include, otherwise you will get an error. So ESLint with TypeScript works very closely with the tsconfig file. Um, then extends, these are different plugins we have for our linting. With linting, there are a couple different style guides. Uh, one of the most famous one is the Airbnb style guide. Another one is the one that is used by Create React App. So if you use Create React App, the ESLint of the, let's say, React team is already integrated. But here I'm using Airbnb. I think it's a very good style guide and includes a lot of different other plugins as well. But these are the rules that extend the basic ESLint rules. And it's important to use plugin prettier here in recommended and put it at the end of the array. Why? Because in the order that the plugins are here in the array, they will overwrite each other. So this plugin will overwrite this plugin if they have the same rules. And at the end of the day, we want, because we use prettier as our code formatter, sometimes Airbnb, for example, has different style rules. But as we use prettier for our code format, we want that prettier overrides those style rules of the plugins we have beforehand. Then here in the rules object, we can override different rules. Here, for example, I've overwritten a couple of rules that I think are not useful for my application. A couple of things you have to know if you use next, React doesn't have to be in the scope necessarily. So this is one you might want to change to off. You can have different values here off, warning, then it will get a yellow or orange scrib scribbly line. And if you have error, you get a red squiggly line and if you run a test, the test will fail and you can have off as well. You can also use 0, 1 and 2, so something like that, but I prefer it like this. It's a little bit more readable. Then react prop types off. If you use TypeScript with 
non-strict mode, you want to turn this off so it doesn't give you error if there is no type. Then this is a personal one I use. And this rule here, prettier, I turn this off because if I have it as error, for example, and I go here to a component and I do some formatting, you can see that I get an ESLint prettier error. And I don't like to code like that because when I save, it will return anyway to the prettier format. So I just turn that off so I'm not getting annoyed by all the squiggly lines just because I have bad formatting before I actually save the file. And these settings you can just take over from this example. So now I want to show you a different application I have here which looks very, very similar. So we can open this JavaScript app I have here. It's almost the same thing, but the files are in JSX uh, or yeah, in vanilla JavaScript. So the difference is not in the prettier. The prettier is exactly the same thing. The difference is in the ESLint config. So you can see we have a different extents array here. The functionality at the end of the day is exactly the same thing. We have some different plugins that are already integrated in the Airbnb TypeScript one. So in this one, we have different plugins that are already integrated in our TypeScript file. But here in our JavaScript project, we have to integrate them manually. Here we have similar rules and here we have some different rules also that are related to the absolute imports I have in this project. And again, to see what packages I exactly have, you can go here to the package.json file. This repo will also be linked in the description down below. And you see the different dev dependencies I put in here to make this repo happen. Then if you have a mixed application with JavaScript and TypeScript, because you might be migrating from JavaScript to TypeScript, you might have to add an overrides array like this. and overwrite different rules for either your JavaScript or your TypeScript. But I'm not going to cover that in this video. So let's go back to our TypeScript application. And yes, that's pretty much what you have to know to make a production application with ESLint and Prettier. I want to show you how to actually integrate those settings in your continuous integration workflow. So I install a package that's called Husky, and this will help us add Git hooks so functions that run with Git. So when we actually commit or push a file, we can decide that different scripts run before we do that. And if they have an error, it's not permitted to commit or push a file. So let's try to integrate an error here. So I delete that and we get an error that this is unused. So I go here and commit. So we can also do commits here, not just in the terminal. So let's do that and it should give us an error. But we see we don't get an error here. So why? We have to go to package.json and actually re uh, run prepare. This, by the way, is new if you use Husky. So if you use Husky version six before in the version four, at least I know it in the version four, you didn't have to do that. But now with the new Husky, you have to do that. So if you go here and run npm run prepare, the hooks are installed and now if we try to let's rename that so we can commit another change in it too now we see we get an error you can show the command output and we see car props is defined but never used so it doesn't let us commit if we have a linting error how did i set that up if you have a folder here that husky you can add different hooks. So for, for example, this was the pre-commit. And again, you can find this code in the description down below, but I run npm run style lint. So just the linting, not all. So now I'm prettier and non TypeScript compiler. So if you go now here and add that again, we should be able to commit the changes. So now the, cha now the test runs and it should be, yes, now it's good. But for example, if we had a TypeScript error, so if we add this error again, so you can see now we have the TypeScript error, not an ESLint error, we should be able to commit um, this file. So because we just said style lint here, it did let us commit. But here in pre-push, we have run all. So if I want to push the changes, we can do that here, uh, or you could also do it in the terminal, doesn't matter. 
we can see we get an error here that something was going wrong in our push. So let's change that again. And now we shouldn't have any errors in our code. Let's commit that again. And let's try to push our changes. And now all the tasks, so all of those scripts that we have in style all, so the TypeScript compiler, linting, and the style sheet or the, the style guide for, of pre-year, all of those will run. And now we can see it finished pushing the changes, so it worked. Now the last thing I want to show you is the .github workflows file. So I have a continuous integration task here. Again, you can find that in the description down below. But what I have is I install the dependencies and then run npm run style. So if we go to GitHub and we are here in our repository, we can go to actions and we can see that two workflows have been running. So because we pushed a commit, we can see here the different uh, tasks that have run and you can see run code style check, which is this task. So if you would have some kind of error, even though we already checked with Husky, our GitHub project will also find that. We can even leverage that more if you go to settings, branches, and set up a rule for a branch, we can use require status checks to be passed before merging. So if you check that, this task that we have here actually needs to successfully pass before we are able to merge a pull request. But that's just as a side note. That's how I personally would integrate a professional workflow for a more serious application. So that was pretty much it for this video. If this video helped you, don't forget to leave a like. And if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. Again, all these files and the documentations are linked in the description down below. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. See you in the next video.